so I hope if you are in the UK you've enjoyed the sunny day wherever else you are I hope you are enjoying your day or have had a good day so far or are starting a lovely day um, so I'm going to grab a pen that doesn't react with watercolours or with water as our first thing I'm just going to move this big sheet out of the way because I don't need it yet and we are going to do a little bit of um, kind of something to get us in the mood we may not finish this um, but we did it on one of the lives that we did a while ago so it is an exercise that if you've been to the live before <laughs> awesome Nancy good colour choices hi Susie um, okay Jean or Jeannie hmm. I'll try them both out and see which one you, you can tell me which one like you like better in my accent at the end. How about that? Um, so, you need your pen. And what we're going to do is we're going to start on the inside of a spiral. And that's going to be our in-breath. We're going to put our feet flat on the floor and bum back in our seat. We're going to kind of try and drop our shoulders so they're not up near our ears. And we're going to try and make sure things like our jaw is loose. So it's not clenched and our teeth aren't tight together and our tongue is not the roof of our mouth which is easy for me because i'm talking but you may find that without being aware of it your tongue does kind of stick to your roof of your mouth um so you can unstick that when we take our breath in we're going to spiral from the inside of the spiral out on the in breath so like this that's the end of my in breath so then I do my out breath and I just pull a line down. And the idea is that we start to get our pen and our breath to match each other. And that we can then use the pen to slow down our breathing a little bit if we want to or if we feel we need to. So this, it's a little bit different to how we did it before maybe. So before I went up, and down. And what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to put some of these spirals in just to start off with. So we're going to try one of those. So on your in breath, breathing in, you're going to spiral outwards. So breathe in. Everybody okay with that? Everybody go at that. I don't know if you can send me thumbs ups or anything like that if you can do um, if you can't I'll just pause for a tiny bit so that if anybody needs anything they can pop up a comment and then I shall continue onwards so once you've got the idea of this the next step is to thanks Bernie is to start on that in-breath again as a spiral somewhere and they can cross over the lines if you want them to and you can make it big or small thanks Eve awesome thank you Nancy right so you start on your in-breath you do your in-breath and then your out-breath try and slow your pen down so it lasts as long as that out-breath and then the next in breath, we're just going to take a line up. And then when you get to the end of that in breath, a line down. And then in. And out. Resist the urge to go fast with your pen. Really try and consciously slow that down. In. And another in and out. I will try and speak up, Kerry. Um, the PlayStation is on, so it's Fanny's whirring. Um, 
I'm as close to the phone as I can get. Uh, if if you still can't hear, let me know and I will poke my other half. I think he's going to do some piano practice anyway, so it should get quieter. So you can see you start to get these lovely lines and patterns appearing and you can make those as close together or as far apart as you like. So what we're gonna do is just spend about a minute just working on these, breathing at our own pace. And you can do the spirals as you're in breath and you're pulling down and just do those. You can do these where we have the in and the out breath going all the way along. You can turn your page. And so we're just gonna set just a minute to do that. So I'm just gonna have a quick look at my Mac timer and do a rough minute, hopefully, because I don't have anything else to time with. Okay, so let's just do some nice, slow, even breaths together. As you're breathing out, really feel your shoulders sink with that breath. good minute oh I'm sorry Bernie um, you could try refreshing or I do the old log out log back in um, and we're just gonna do the paint bit next so I think you've seen it before so you'll be able to catch up real quick um, it's really frustrating when that happens yeah the PlayStation's gone off now guys he's moved on to the DS um, because you're moaning <laughs> they can hear you because I moaned about the well I didn't moan about the noise I just mentioned the noise um, and hi Jean so what we're going to do now is just grab any brush our favourite brush if you've got a brush you really like grab that one and we are going to just grab a colour on our colour palette that is calling to us and mine is this one I have no idea why it's an earthy colour it's um Quinacridone burnt. I can't. I can see the name on the side. Quinacridone burnt orange. This one is. So I'm going to mix a little bit of that up, and then I'm going to pick a second colour that I really want, and it's that one. And it's paint grey. Just going to pop that into there. We've no idea what these two will look like together. I'm thinking, you know. So a nice watery mix. We can always go back and add more pigment if we want to. So I'm washing my brush off. I've got a little tea towel so I'm taking the excess water off so it's not too drippy. And I'm just going to pick up some of this, my first colour. And I'm going to do the same kind of thing that we did here. But instead of doing a spiral, I'm just going to do a circle that goes on top of itself. Um, it, it, it doesn't 
It doesn't matter, we're going to do circles and lines with it, Nancy. So, he is very thoughtful, is he? So, on our in breath, around, and then pull down. And then I'm going to get another colour, I'm going to go close to it so they touch. So, in breath. And I feel like I do need more of that pigment in there. So I'm going to go here. Probably still more. I want really intense today, I think. We're just going to do about 10, 12 maybe these so just circle and line breaths and I like to press down on my brush as well so it's kind of making a fatter line sometimes they're all looking like number nines <laughs> which I quite like What a blue. What is that? That's a green colour. Let's, okay. yeah. Let's try that. I'm going to put a couple of circles down here. And I'm actually going to go around and pull up my breath this time. And now I'm just going to do some filled in circles just because I feel like them. I feel like I'm connected to my breath. And I've enjoyed doing that exercise. But I just fancy some filled in shapes with the leftover bits of paint, I think. Just where they're mixing, I might put some dots as well. Kind of rest in the middle of places. My, um, my page is bending a little bit. I'm just going to flatten it. And where I've got some of those dots are quite wet, I'm just going to use a drier brush. I just dried it on the tea towel. Just suck up some of that colour so it doesn't roll everywhere when I let go. Is it there? Hi Myrna. So that's our kind of warm up. Now I'll pop these out of the way and then when I fancy doing something that's like fine marks and mark making, I'll grab them out. This one will probably look lovely with some gold uh, or maybe some really fine lines going in there. So I would pop that out of the way to dry on the shelf. 
And I need to grab a tissue. Just because there's work on the other side of the piece of paper that I'm going to use. So, how are you all feeling after doing that lovely warm up? Do you feel more settled and ready to kind of do some painting and some creating? Or did it not have any effect at all? How did you find that? Cleaning my brush off. There we go. I probably will actually use that one again. You've all gone quiet. I think I've made you super mindful, haven't I? You're all still painting. I'm giving you a little bit of time to finish yours off. Um, awesome, Eve. Great, thanks, Phyllis. Fabulous. Everybody else ready to move on to creating something like this. We're going to look at how to blend and graduate our paints and have a little bit of fun in doing that. And then we can just have some, make some patterns. I like lines and dots and really simple things. Oh, definitely have a go when you can. Um, I, it's really simple, but it is really relaxing. Awesome, Erica, Fab, Bernie. Brilliant, Marianne. Okay, so. I used two colours here. I used something that is something like um, a rose colour. It's not a magenta. It's close, It's near magenta and rose. And then a warm yellow. I'm going to use something totally different today because picking the colours tends to be, at least the first one anyway, is very intuitive. So I'm going to go to my Wizzy Wizzy palette and see what colour. My brain, my brain wants that colour, which is, I think, might be an Aptomide Maroon. Ow. Um, a look. Yeah, it is an Aptomide Maroon. My brain really likes an Aptomide Maroon at the moment, so I'm going to mix myself up a kind of... Um, a fair bit of pigment in there, but watery rather than creamy. And then I'm going to pick a second colour to go with that. Now, because it's a purpley tone, I'm not going to choose anything that is um, green because that will give me browns because it'll put all three primary colours together. So I'm probably going to go for either a blue or a yellow or possibly a really bright pink. I'm really drawn to the warm colours in my palette at the moment, so I'm thinking, hmm, yeah, just a, this is my one of my favourite yellows, it's Hansa Yellow Medium, I think. I really like it, so I'm gonna grab some of that. And so you need to pick your two colours now and mix yourself up in your palette, your two colours, so they're ready to go. Remember, you can always add a bit more water to them if you, there's a bit of a gap between you mixing them and painting. We'll see what these two do together. So, I clean my brush off and I'm loading it up with paint and I'm just bringing kind of a wet swathe of it down my page. Clean my brush off again taking off the excess water, picking up the yellow. I'm going to put it next to it. And you can see that at the moment, that isn't blended at all, is it? It's just a really kind of solid, hard line. So I'm going to clean my brush again, take off some of the water so it's a little bit damp. And I'm just going to move backwards and forwards across that little bit, just with a little bit of water. And then I might pick up a little bit more of the Naptomide Maroon and bring that in so that it kind of comes down. And I might pick up a little bit more of the yellow and just kind of play around with these two colours next to each other until I'm getting a nice 
on a fairly gradual blend. And sometimes I like to go back over the top and just add some kind of droplets and splodges so there's some variety in the textures that are there. And these aren't two colours. I don't love the colour they make when they blend. Um, but, you know, that's a good thing to know. Knowing you don't like two colours when they blend is incredibly useful as an artist because I know that I will not put these two colours as colours to blend with each other next to each other or in wet in wet because I don't love how they mix the colour they make when they mix. When I do that I'm going to do it again and if I need to pick up some more paint I will. Okay and so hi Julia, hi Jez. Opera pink. I, it, I I was very tempted to go with opera pink and it would look lovely with naps and wide maroon. There's a, a lovely cascade green looks nice with. Can you see how by wiggling my brush like this you're getting some brush marks and some extra little bits of texture in there that are fun. You can also go back and dot in. Now let's see. So just moving up, but not all the way up. Because if I go all the way up, I'll make it all that kind of the mixed colour. So once I've gone part way, I'll clean the brush off. And my way of doing graduations like this is is not I don't think the way that you're taught to do them at all, but it's the way that works for me. So that's what I'm showing you. And then some of the yellow here. And then I might pop a few little bits of water because I really like the patterns that they make when they go in. And this time I think I'm going to start with the, yeah, well, I'm going to start with the Naps Mind Maruri at the bottom. And you can, just by adding water to how power, you can get it to go. Pop the yellow with that and see how it mixes. Take the excess water off if you want a more intense colour. Put the wrong colour at the top, but I can live with that. I'm going to pop some more this yellow in the middle just so it's kind of has a little bit more of a yellow tinge in there and then see if I can just get a nice intense colour on each end. I'm just playing until I'm happy until I like it and again you can go in while it's still wet on the ones that you've already done and where it's wet you take a brush that's loaded with some water don't worry about it Jez oh paperwork is the pits the other thing you can do that's quite fun I don't know if it'll work because these are quite dry as you can you want to you can make some wet bits and use the end of your tissue and just press it down where it's wet and you can lift off to create some kind of little areas that are quite white you can also use this tissue scrunched up to make a texture now mine's a bit soggy but if you loosely scrunch it and then press it on you can get some fun little textures I'm not loving this bit here, so I'm just going to go in and add a little bit more yellow to it. And then I'll just lighten that up a little bit. So, we've got some strips of playing with wet in wet. I am quite intrigued to know what naphthamide maroon and opera pink would look like so I'm going to just do a quick one here and I'm going to take the naphthamide maroon down to a quite pale colour like this which I think works quite well 
and then I'm going to grab straight out of the palette some of the opera pink and just put it on the bottom here and work up. Oh, that is pretty. So I'm just going to very quickly create myself a couple of these to play on over here. Now it does work better if you start with a different colour at the top, but I keep forgetting to today. So I'm just going to add on my opera rose pink. Like you've got to stick to just two colours if you want to experiment with different colours and have different colour stripes go for it and this is just a really loose kind of graduation it doesn't have to be perfect but we don't want a really hard line between them if we can help it I'm not pink there I'm just picking some up off the edges because it's going to blow when I dry it in a second. So if I pick it up now, when I dry it, that will be better. So I worked a bit differently and these dried faster it seems. So I haven't got any of those fun watermarky patches in these. And I've got quite a hard line there. I'm just going to go over it with some water. I'm going to pop in a bit more of the Nats and Moon. I think it's where I took it very, very pale. Uh, I'm just going to go back up. Just basically glaze over the top again. And that's some lovely, relaxing, wetting wet play. Thank you, Kirsten. Um, I'm, I don't really normally like yellows and reds or oranges, and it seems to be all I'm using at the moment. So I'm gonna give this a blast of drying with my heat gun. And then we can see how you guys are doing and if we're ready. To go on to the next kind of okay so I'm feeling my paper once the heat of the the heat gun goes out of it you can feel I can feel it's still cool here very cool over there and a little bit here so it needs a bit more drying because otherwise if I go to use my pen on the top it will either suck it in and I won't get a good line or my pen will stop working or I won't get a very intense colour Thanks, Marianne. Hi, Leah Donna. D I don't worry about being late. It's all good. So I'm going to give them a bit more of a blast. I am grabbing a black pen to work with. You can work in whatever colour you want. If you want to work in white, if you want to use a dip pen, if you want to use metallics, anything you like. I'm not planning on putting anything wet on here. So you could use things like Tombows, you could, awesome, I'm glad you're gonna stay, sorry. Um, you could also use things like Ecoline, you could use um, ink tense pencils, you could use watercolor pencils, crayons, literally anything that you can make a mark with. Now, when I'm doing marks and mark making, I tend to stay really, really simple. Um, and the only kind of rule I have is I try and put the mark at least two other places, either on the, the page and the whole thing or within a strip. 
So I'm just going to play around with some of the marks that I like. Now I know I can't really zoom in to show you these marks. So if there's one and you can't see it very well, pop a comment up and I will grab a little pad out and try and do it bigger so you can see what I'm doing. The first thing I'm going to start with, this is, um, I didn't realise I got this. It's a, a uni pin brush pen. So I'm having a play with it to see what it does because um, I just pulled it out of the pot. And I really quite like lines and I like loose lines so I'm not holding my pen right down here so I've got lots of control I'm holding it about halfway so I've got enough control that I'm going to get a line but not so much that it's a really rigid line and you can just go and then put that same kind of line in a couple of places so that you know it's going to be there Um, I really love dashes. I really love really small dashes. Now I've got to turn this so that I can dash and I'm going to need to change my glasses in a second. Now this, this doesn't have a super fine tip so I can get dashes that are fairly fine but they're not super 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 fine. I'll show you by lifting it up to the camera. So, these are what I would call fairly fine, but not super, super fine dashes. Um, so I'm going to put some of those in another place, or another few places. And I don't have to do the same. Um, number of lines of them if I don't want to but I do really like the number three so I probably will end up doing three rows of dashes as just the same as I've automatically done three lines together what can I say I like the number three a lot we had a whole month in our mind for watercolours based around the number three I mean I pretended it was triangles but really it was the number three I am just starting to assemble uh, collaborative triangles I've got 50 um, that have been emailed to me so I've gone through and I've taken those out and popped them into a folder on my desktop and then I am planning on replying to all of the lovely emails that I have from you guys to say thank you and to reply to you I wasn't being rude not replying I'm just trying to be organized enough so that if I do them all kind of on the same day I can say to everyone if you if you have sent me triangles you should have got an email back if you haven't you might need to send them back again thanks wendy and then i quite like um, i've got lots of marks actually that i like i'm trying to put this now hmm i feel like i need another lot of lines here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a kind of more controlled straight line here like that and then I'm going to pop another one of those I think here and I think here now this part is just picking marks and just following my kind of inclination and stuff I find incredibly mindful if I were to try and do a really complicated kind of tangle or learn a new tangle, I would come out of being mindful to learn it until it was something that I knew um, well enough to kind of sink into it. That's a fantastic solution, Eve. Well done. Um, so I'm just going to grab out. Um, I've got a 0.3, a 0.03, a 0.05 and a 0.1 fine liner. And... I'm going to have a little bit of a play with what other kind of marks and things I can make. So I've got my brush pen which is thicker and then these ones that are fairly fine. And the black one is the, the black one here is really fine. I'm going to put in a solid line because I really love white dots and I think I could incorporate some white dots if I put in some solid black spaces on here. So 
Again, I am putting them in three places most of the time. But I think for this one, I might put them in a few more just to be able to get in those really nice white dots right on the top of the line. Now, this one is the 0.01. So this is a mark that I really like to do. I'm going to show you it very big on here. And I'm going to do it in my lines here and then I'll lift it up so you can see. But what I do is three horizontal dashes, three vertical dashes. And you complete that so you go all the way along the line until it's finished. When you start on the line underneath, you start with the opposite one. So this has three vertical, so I'd go three horizontal. So it's all just made up of marks. So I'm going to pop in some of those. So I really enjoy doing those. And again, you will notice three marks. It's, you know, I like the number three quite a lot. So I'm going to start here. And I'm going to need to switch my glasses actually. I'm going to do that now because this is getting finer for my eyes. And I need a little bit of help. So this is obviously one of those projects that actually, if you think how long it took us to do the one strip of the graduated watercolours, you could easily make this into something where you did 10 minutes. And yeah, the watercolour part, if you're working with fine line, because fine line is like behind this bit, would be just a little bit at the start and then the rest of the mindfulness would be in terms of pen work but you could come back and do 10 minutes and add to it And this just gives us a lovely vehicle to fly. So I'm going to lift that up so you can see how those marks kind of look. I've got a little bit of a delay so there will be a little pause and so that I can see if I can get it so that they are in focus or not. Hang on, can I get them even closer? There you go. So that's how they look close up. That's really interesting, Law. Ooh, silver gel pen sounds awesome, Nancy. I, I, I do go for five. If I pick a number other than three, I go for five. Um, which is the number that seems like our household family. Thank you, Marianne. I wonder if the three is because I was born on the 3rd of May and when I was younger, I was really awesomely into numerology. Like, uh, not necessarily um, believing it all 100% but the the fascination of you could do all these things and figure out stuff with numbers I, I really loved numbers so numerology as kind of a, a, a side shoot of loving numbers hi Dale um, and my kind of my birth number was three as well as the date of my birth was three and I found that a really interesting coincidence and then five's also the month that I was born in which is weird, because like my, my family, I suppose we were a seven, although for quite a few years we were a three. So, but yeah, it's really interesting, isn't it, how, why certain numbers might be there and relevant and, and pop up for you. I find that fascinating. Right, back to this. I'm going to put a thin stripe here. And put a thin stripe here. And then I'm going to put a thicker stripe using a different pen. Yeah, thicker stripe using a different pen. And then I'm just going to pop in 
with the same stripe. And then I'm going to put a zigzag here. And I don't mind if it's a little bit wonky. It doesn't have to be perfectly even. And so this bit's starting to feel quite lovely and good to me. I want to go in and put even more details in. So this isn't something I'm going to finish tonight. It is something I'm going to keep coming back to, I think, and enjoying. So I'm going to have a look down here. But I just want to show you on the next one that actually everything that we're doing here in pen, we could do in paint. So this is a Tenno brush. And if I fertile around in my pot, that's a 20 o brush. So these are really fine brushes. And then I want just my triple zero. There we go. There's a, a triple zero brush as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix myself up with an older brush. Um, a nice bit of that Naxamide Maroon. So that it's quite creamy and intense. And I'm going to try and basically mimic just this bit of pattern, but here, just to show you that you can, if you want to, do it as brushwork as well. Ah, oh, did you, Gian? Genie. See, I want to call you all kinds of crazy things. <laughs> well, no, because you two and two it would be four. Although double numbers are quite powerful numbers, so you could just go with two. Or is it 11? I can't remember. Mm, it's very interesting. Uh, so I've grabbed my Tenno. In fact, no. I'm grabbing my triple zero. And I'm just going to pull a line. goes across. Nice thick one. And then I want some thinner lines. And I'm thinking I can probably do it with this if I'm careful. Let's see, these are really light pressure. Mm, no, I think I do need a finer brush. These are Pro Art brushes and they're a set that I got off Amazon. Um, I can certainly pop up a link if anybody needs it. It will be a UK link, but it might help you to find something similar. If you want to look at some fine brushes, they're not, they weren't very expensive wigs, but about eight brushes, they worked out about two pounds each, um, I think. And they last really well. I mean, I only use them for watercolours, I use them very gently. I try really hard to remember not to pick up paint direct from the pan and to have mixed it and put it into the palette with a right amount of water. So you can see, I'm working on the number of teeny teeny dashes. You get about ten or so out and then you have to reload this one. This this kind of brushwork requires enough of my concentration that I have to be fully present. But I've practiced it enough and I am kind of I'm getting loads better at the idea of being discerning rather than judging myself if I make a mistake. And I find that I can sink into being, it be, it ends up being very meditative for me. So I've then got three slightly thinner lines. And I've spaced those a little bit more for, for ease. And then I've got a thick line, so I'm actually going to go over that twice. Okay. Then I've got a zigzag, I've got a thin line and then I've got a medium line. So I'll pop that medium line in while I've got the right brush for it. And I'm going to do the thin lines and the zigzag and then I'm going to lift it up so you can have a little look at what it's like. All of this is fantastic for your fine motor skills. If you've got kids and they like doing this kind of stuff, encourage it because it's exactly, if you're holding your brush like this, it's exactly the same as a pencil grip. In fact, when I was in year six, 
and teaching and my kids didn't like doing handwriting practice we would do a lot of kind of fine brush work and mark making and all this kind of stuff we've made pictures out of handwriting because I totally emphasised I hadn't used to like handwriting practice but I always wished I'd got a neater handwriting that was natural that I didn't have to stop and slow down for it is incredibly relaxing, Kirsten. Hi, Yvonne, it's good to see you. Hi, April. So, right, let's see if I can get this in the right kind of closeness. It might take me a minute or two just so that you can see the pen marks and the paint marks and have to figure out how close to go. Move that way a bit. I think you can see them. I'm trying to be still, I'm just a bit wobbly. So, you can see I can mimic those and do them in paint. And I just, I didn't actually use the 20O brush. I used a triple zero and a 10O brush. That I find incredibly relaxing and soothing to do. It is, it really is. And they're just lines and dashes, just lines, dashes. I haven't even done circles yet. And so you can make an awful lot with lines and dashes. Another one that I really quite like if you do diagonal lines like that on one line and on the next line you do diagonal lines going the other way really simple kind of mark so i'm going to go back to my pens and do a little bit of that i've also got to pop in this mark in two other places so i'm just going to mark myself where i think i might want that to go so i've had, so i know to leave myself some room in those spaces and then I'm going to go for doing little diagonals often it feels easier to do it one way than the other you can always turn your paper completely round you're doing the same movement. I find it much easier to be pulling from the top and back to my left. So if I turn my paper upside down I can I know I can't. No. I do I turn it like that so that I can pull I'm still pulling to the left. So just alter the angle a little bit until you find a comfy way to do it. I do find it a bit harder to judge how deep the marks are this way around now. But again, this one's a great one for um, clothing. It's like fabric, different weaves and knitting patterns. Great on if you're doing jumpers, the texture looks a bit like a jumper. Never really sure when to stop this one, gotta be honest. So I've done one, two, three. And that's, I'm hoping I've got it in roughly the right place. So you can have a look. Enjoy, Lord, thanks for joining us. <coughs> Gian, yeah, I think, I think as well, I these fine liners, I only use them on watercolours. Um, and so if they do get something on them because it's watercolour you can with a tissue or like um, a baby wipe you can often get it to come off and your pen with a little bit of working will work work better whereas if I've got pens and stuff that I've used on acrylic and I've gunked them up I can never get them back to being okay but yeah absolutely um, the other thing is it, gel pens if you've got a good gel pen metallic ones I'm quite liking and what else could we do it in about Tombows? I've got um, a pink Tombow here. No, I've got a certain, mm, that's not. I do love that colour pink. I think maybe that one might go better though. So you could use this end of a Tombow. That's still quite a bright pink for this, but we'll just go with it. And then you can do. Mm. 
on the dashes. So it's not as fine, but it's still, you know, still fine enough to be able to do it. Just leave a slightly bigger gap. It's quite interesting to see which pens go over and how they look again. We kind of add into that repertoire of what we know about our supplies, but in a really quite fun, mindful, soothing way that is getting us to be just present. These this kind of mark making, I think you have to be and just swap to the brush end, really. <laughs> okay, Jean. I'll get it right eventually. Promise. You just have to remind me. There you go, that's that nice thick line. I wonder how it would be because it's actually you know, if you use a really light kind of brushy feel, get that. And then thin line, thin line, and a thicker line. So you can see you could do it with a Tombow. What else have I got in my little arsenal over here? Well, Nancy did say silver gel pen was delicious, delicious, so I'll grab out a silver gel pen and see how that looks. Oh, it does. Is it sinking in there a little bit? Let's see. No, no, it is sitting on the top. Just about. This gel pen is not wanting to sit on the top. However, we do have... These are Derwent Graphics paint pens and... When they work, they're fabulous. But what they do is they blob. They leave blobs of paint. So they're not ones that I ever risk on anything that feels like it's um, super special or that I'm gonna be gutted if it's ruined by a big blob of paint. The silver one has actually been probably the best behaved of all of them for me. And I, I love the colors, I love the opacity of them, but I just can't seem to stop them from either blobbing paint everywhere or just not working. But the silver does look lovely. Against that Natsumide Maroon, it's a really delicious combo. So again, I'm just copying the marks I made on the first one. Because then I get an idea of how they look and how they work together. And once I've done the first one, even less thinking required. So I can just really sink into it and enjoy it. And the zigzag. And then a thin line. A thick line, so I should do two or three together. And then a thin line. So that one worked better. And that one and then you've obviously got posca pen that we could use but i want to go back to my fine pen on here i aim to please jean i aim to please so oh i need to know what the time is my mac talks like, oh we've got about a minute left i don't think i'm going to get this one finished guys i'm going to be honest i'm going to pop the line here another thing that i really like to do this one's made all of lines so i'm not sure how it's going to work but i really love when you do scallopy patterns like that, I really mm -hmm. like those. That was my husband singing with his headphones on. I think he's forgot that there's a Facebook line. Oh, that's really nice. He's actually got a really good voice. Just not when he's got his noise cancelling headphones on and can't hear himself. And then I'm going to be quite fancy putting them in. And then I'm going to do the same down here. And then I think I'm going to be okay with calling it night, stopping there, and knowing this is one of those lovely pages that I can come back to. I did it quite big. Um, normally I would have done just the, like the three that I showed you to start with, but I wanted to try and make sure that you could see a little bit better, because I can't zoom in. So 
everything I keep reading about my camcorder tells me I need some weird box thing that I keep forgetting the name of and to use different software and it gets complicated. So that is where I am with mine. Let's see if I can get that in the right place so that it is in focus and that you can see it because they're quite small some of them I think I'm kind of there there we go thank you Wendy <laughs> oh that sounds like a great colour combo Nancy so I think you can see that this has got lots and lots of scope and lots and lots of potential so the things that I'd say to go away with are get yourself into the right state for being mindful you know I'm not sure how is it I don't know how to pronounce your name I'm going to be honest if you can tell me I would love to know um Miyake me mm, I don't know I'm really sorry um but yeah I used to have a hidden language when I was little and when I was a teen that used to write things in where I'd developed these things where I took certain bits out of the letters and I really I think if I tried hard enough I could remember it, it would be awesome to include that actually that's sparked a really great idea so thank you um get yourself into the the state for being mindful you don't have to do the whole exercise like we did you can just do a little bit on a card and come back to each time and do that bit of focusing on your breath because you could really see the difference it made to being able to sit down and be present and be in the right state of mind to be discerning and not judgmental and to be curious mika thank you that's a cool name um the second thing is think about when you're doing these maybe pick a color that you love and then mix it with some different colors to see what combinations work and what you know new things you can find sometimes you'll mix two paints in your palette and you will get uh, an unsurprisingly fantastic color i tend to resort to mixed oranges like this orange here rather than mixing my own so this morning i did a really quick 10 minute video and popped it up on youtube as a, a 10 minute tuesday video that i'm going to try doing through june for everybody in the group and i found an orange mix that i really liked and it was with um transparent yellow or bis bismuth van day yellow bismuth something like that i can't remember and this pyro scarlet scarlet and it was a really lovely orange and discovering those color mixes is really fantastic and then with the marks again play around with the different pens you've got if i'd got a bit more room i would have definitely grabbed out a dip pen and been having a play with using a dip pen as well so this is one of those things where you could take a little card like one of these a5 cards and you could do one color and then you could get another color and you could do a batch of them that then you come back and mark make on when you want to or you could do three different colors combinations or you could choose to keep the say the red or purple color the same and then change the others and drop yourself some little notes just make a border um that's the one I did here. So in the 10 minute Tuesday thing, we were looking at graduating by adding from one color, by adding yellow to get to the yellow and then back again. And then I wrote myself a little note about what it was. And my favorite was orange pyrrole scarlet and transparent yellow and pyrrole scarlet plus bismuth band -Aid yellow. Starting with a more orange toned red gave a vivid rich orange. So you can use that handwriting to make a border for you if you wanted to. So I'm just giving you some ideas of where you could take this. I hope you enjoyed doing that. I hope you've had some fun either painting along or watching along. There is a thread up in the group. So if you want to post a work in progress picture or anything that you've been creating on, if my mum was watching, she would probably be knitting socks. She knits the most gorgeous, fantastic socks. And I'm very excited that one of my pairs is finished and I might actually be able to pick it up from a social distance, which means she will throw it at my head but that's fine because the socks are totally worth it. 
um, but she could post up a picture of her knitting. So if you've been creating something else not related to this, just pop it onto that thread. I think it's really lovely to see what each of us is creating and working on right now. So thank you so much. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you, Myrna. Thanks, Erica. You guys take care and I will see you again really, really soon.